Hello, I, uh, I'm Daniel. Um, now, some others did some movies and they were like, I don't know, 50 minutes long, so I'll try to <laughs> do this um, a little bit faster. Uh, just for you, whoever, who, whoever is watching this. So, um, there are 30 filters here. I will first go through like some of the basic code, like the adding of the text, perhaps. Um, let's just uh, let's just stop this for a second and go through all the all the easy things. I'm just gonna check that I'm streaming. Uh, yep, great. I don't want to sit here recording a lot of stuff uh, if I'm not actually recording it, you know. All right, so this is all just one file, one main function. Um, we're actually not using the epic uh, detect, uh, but we're highly using the GPU. Now I'm not doing this very efficiently because I'm copying a lot of memory all the time and stuff, and that's not really particularly good when it comes to the GPU. But but uh, GPUs are cool. Um, so we're playing just a random video from YouTube using normal video capture. Oh. I think this is maybe the only piece of, uh, piece of error checking, uh, one of the few pieces of error checking in the entire application. Um, we have some matrices we use for images. Uh, we just get the first image to get the sizes. Uh, and we also have a lot of matrices for the GPU, including a large, large one here to contain all of them. Um, and then we have a window called play. Now we have this endless while loop uh, where we get a new picture. Uh, make sure that it's not empty. If it is, then just restart the video. That means it's over. Uh, then we resize them to half the size so they can actually fit inside one screen. Uh, and we uh, we let's see where I go. So we upload it to the GPU. Um, we have a previous uh, image. We use this for uh, simple movement detection. I'll show you later. Uh, we have a a gray uh, grayscale image, just because that's also very useful. Uh, and then we loop through all the 30 images. Uh, and we have a, uh, 6 columns and 5 rows of images, making 30. And then we have our large image. It's actually the image containing... Oh, I shouldn't have stopped it. It's actually the image containing all the... Um, uh, what can call all these small uh, images, basically all these small videos. This is one large image on the deep GPU, um, and then the one we edit is just a region of interest of this. So we're actually just editing part of a large image to save a lot of memory, um, and then some more variables that we use. This one is just the image, which image which currently uh, editing. And we go through all 30 of them. Now I'm gonna go through this uh, sequentially uh, in a second. I just want to explain uh, or just take a look at where I add the text because that's pretty simple. Um, but first, after we do all our stuff, uh, we again save the image uh, we need for the movement thingy and then we download it to the display image which will be added to. Uh, or shown on the screen. Um, now here we just loop through all 30 pictures again. Um, and this is very basic. We just have a string. We set it to whatever text is uh, the correct. And then we just display this text. Um, and then we show the image and if we press escape then we're done. Then we exit the application. So let's take a look at some of the actual code here. Some of the actual code that does something. Now the first one uh, up here top left is invert as you can see. And that's just a simple not uh, operation. Um, very simple in OpenCV. Uh, it basically just, uh, well yeah, inverts and negates all the, uh, all the pixels. Um, yeah, simple bitwise not. Then the next three are brightness, contrast, and gamma. Now I sort of felt like I was cheating here because, well, gamma is defined as including both the contrast and the brightness, so it's actually the same function I use for all three. Um, I use the convert to, 
uh, which can take uh, I don't remember what this is but this is the gamma and this is the brightness so here I only edit the brightness here I only edit the oh sorry not gamma contrast here I only edit the uh, brightness here I only edit the contrast and here I edit both of them to show gamma so that's pretty simple the next one is an alpha blend, blend. I'm taking a uh, a rotated image from down here um, and I'm alpha blending it over another image just simple print. so we make a matrix a rotation matrix uh, to rotate uh, the image um, we convert convert uh, I'm not entirely sure why I do this this is sort of uh, stupid that's sort of why 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 am I even doing that why that waited? You see, I I actually think I can remove this without anything happening. I'm trying to like convert the grayscale image to a oh yeah oh if it's, it's oh I forgot I forgot. Well, it's been like um 25 filters since I made this one, so you'll just have to bear with with, with me for a second. The reason I do this is because it actually needs all three channels, else this function will fail. Um, now, from I use uh, the matrix I created. This is not on the GPU. Everything with GPU colon colon is on the GPU. Uh, calculated on the GPU. Um, now I take a mega matrix, and that's a rotation matrix I use. Uh, I get the center of the image. I rotate it by 100. 20 degrees and the one is I don't remember it doesn't want to give me code completion right now I actually don't remember what the one is oh it's scale I think it's scale uh, then we use uh, uh, find transformation we warp it uh, this is a very nice function so we just take the image we want to uh, our source image uh, then we use the rotation matrix to warp it we keep the size and we um, draw it on the uh, on this matrix, a uh, GPU matrix. Uh, now we just use add weighted to add these two images with half and half weight. Um, I honestly don't remember what this one is. It's probably something not very important for this matter. And this one is the destination image. And then we just make sure, if, uh, I use a lot of releases, it's just to make sure I release memory because um, as I as I said, I'm not being very efficient with the GPU, so I actually managed to run out of memory on a one gigabyte GPU, uh, <laughs> which yeah, yeah. Anyways, let's continue. The next one is just a, 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 a histogram equalization. It's very easy. Uh, it can only be done on uh, grayscale using the equalize history uh, function, anyways. So I'm doing that. I'm just equalizing the history from our grayscale image to a temporary image, and I'm converting it to uh, three uh, uh, three layers. What do you call it? Yeah, red RGB image, because that's what this type is. Uh, so it will be black in the end, of course, because we're converting a, a, a grayscale image to to a non-grayscale image. It, it won't get colors automatically. Uh, now the next one, I'm just basically making a gray image. So basically I'm just showing the gray image I already made. Uh, every time you convert between colors, whether it's uh, from red, green, blue, or <laughs> in OpenCV, blue, green, red, to gray the other way around, or to HSV or something, you use this function, convert color. Uh, so it's source, source image, destination image, and the conversion to be done. Or, the, yeah, so it's a grey image that goes to a blue and red image. The next image is a binary image. Um, that's also a very uh, simple function. We just use a threshold function on our grayscale image. We save it to another uh, uh, matrix. I'm just going to call them matrix image. Whatever, same, same. I'm just going to convert it with a threshold of 100. Uh, it should all be colored white, uh, and it's a binary threshold. And then I just uh, well convert it to so it can be drawn again uh, to a color uh, color image. The next one is Sobel, uh, simple Sobel itch detection. Uh, now it's not particularly oh. 
it just restarted. Well, that's great. It's not particularly well functioning, but it, it's decent. I suppose you could do it better if you uh, did it on grayscale or used thresholding and so forth. Many things you can do. The next one is a simple Gaussian blur. <laughs> that's just one single function. I'm using a 7x7 Gaussian. I do not remember what the last one does. Uh, must be this one. Sigma, sigma. Oh yeah, that's uh, the sigma used for calculating the uh, the Gaussian values. If I set it to zero, it will just automatically calculate based on the size. Um, the next is an example of cropping, and you can see we crop from around up here. Uh, so we just crop part of the entire image and then display it in here. And that's uh, done by 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 having another matrix. Then we just take this is the large image, and if we pass a rectangle int uh, into that, it will um, reference those uh, those pixels. And then I copy those pixels to the edit GPU, which is the one we're currently editing on the final GPU. So I'm taking a r uh, one rectangle tangle from the final GPU and copying it to an uh, another place, so basically cropping it. It's the same thing uh, I'm doing with the rectangle up here when getting the image I'm editing. I'm just using a rect uh, getting a rectangle, re rectangle uh, which is just, you know, a rectangle, part of, of this matrix, part of the image. Now where did we where did we get to? We got to the Gaussian, the crop. Now there's a rotate, and we actually already uh, went through this because, well, I made the alpha blend after I made the rotate, so I'm using the exact same code here. Um, I yeah, I just uh, explained that up here with with the uh, affine transformation or uh, affine warping in the uh, yeah. Uh, now we have uh, erosion, uh, er eroding, erosion, er er erosion, dilation, opening and closing. Um, uh, they seem very similar here because obviously they are, um, but but you should be able to see the difference. Uh, now they are very similar, so I'm just gonna explain all four in a row here. Um, the first erosion, you I make a new matrix. Uh, the reason I do this is because we want binary images, um, which is what we get here. First we get a binary image, then we... wow, jeez, why? Okay, again, one second, this is 20... S no, 17 filters ago, and some explanation. I'm just gonna take a quick look at it, and I will explain it. Okay, so what we're doing is we're getting two matrices uh, of the type unsigned character, which is 8-bit. I don't know why they do this, it's sort of redundant, but I'm guessing it's because of platform differences. And then we want it one layer deep, so to speak, uh, of the same size as the image we're editing. So then we get a thresholded imary, uh, image, we're making it binary. I increased the thre threshold so you could see a larger so it would be easier to see the erosion dilation opening and so forth as compared to like this binary image up here for example um very much difference right um then i'm doing the uh, whoop control c then i'm doing the erosion uh, they are just you know functions of uh, opencv opencv is awesome really so I'm taking the uh, the input image here. Now the reason I have like two is because uh, okay, the reason I actually did this was because I was using mon uh, mono two for other stuff at some point, but I'm not anymore. So this actually doesn't really matter a lot. But I'm I'm just using it now. So we have this what image uh, as the source and the other what image as destination. And when we just pass in a mat an empty matrix it will uh, create a three by three uh, matrix with the uh, ones um, and then we convert it to color because we need to display it and then we release the uh, the matri uh, matrix we made up here now this functions in the exact same way the dilation except it says dilate instead of erode which is very awesome thank you OpenCV
And then we do opening, which is just an erosion followed by a dilation, exact same thing, and a closing, which is a dilation followed by an erosion. Um, and mm, that's why I wanted to explain them like <laughs> in a row because they are so very similar. And again, I'll, I have a lot of redundant code. This isn't very very efficient because I'm constantly creating images on the GPU uh, in the GPU memory and then releasing them and creating them again and releasing them and so forth. Not very efficient, but it's you know it's just testing code so to speak. Now the next one is a basic mean filter. Uh, it's actually the just the blur function is a uh, mean blur uh, or a mean filter filter for blurring. So I just take oh and it all, uh, only works on grayscale. Some of these are in grayscale even though it seems a little bit odd, but it's because the functions only work in grayscale. Uh, you could make it work in um, uh, colored images, I suppose, by taking the channels separately. But it just takes uh, the input output some th something else using a seven by seven mean uh, kernel, and then it converts it to color again to display it. Now this one uh, mirrors on the x axis, and again I may have cheated a little bit because down here I'm mirroring on the y axis. Um, but now it, it's it's just mirrored basically, and it, it's a single function, just a flip function. So take the image, uh, one means flipping along x, uh, um, minus one means flipping along y, and zero, I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, oh well, it doesn't matter. So we just flip it along the x-axis, uh, save it to another image, and then copy it back. The reason we're not just doing like this is because sometimes they, uh, the functions will edit the um, uh, the images so, so it would it would screw up because it would try to read from the same image it's editing and that's not very good <laughs> obviously because c um, variables may change the or, or definitely may change then the next one is a symbol movement detection uh, obviously it has a lot of um, it's very error prone right now because it's uh, it's just based on the previous image, uh, so a lot of um, uh, uh, camera um, irregularities and pixel switching and stuff are going on. But you can basically see it's like a simple movement detection. I didn't want to do too much of it. Basically, we just make a temporary image. We convert the previous. Uh, as I said, we we take that down the bottom here. We just save the current image to a variable so we can use it as previous image. Uh, we convert it to grayscale, only using grayscale here, and then we just subtract. It's a simple subtraction. Now I think actually maybe some of the random noise, maybe because the, the variables are overflowing, um, because they are unsigned characters I suppose. I guess they are for a simple grayscale image. I don't know if the subtract functions will um, uh, put a limit on values, but yeah, that's actually that's interesting. I should have looked more into that, but I did now. And then we just convert it back, obviously. Um, the next one.